The activity coefficient goes to 1 as the molal concentration or any concentration goes to 0. So the limit of the activity coefficient goes to 1 as the concentration goes to 0. And that's sort of to be expected. The reason why you have non-ideal behavior, in other words why we have gamma not equal to 1, is that you have solute-solute interactions. But if you start decreasing the concentration, and in fact as a limit as you go to 0, then the activity coefficient will go to 1 and it will become ideal because you just have one solute in there. For electrolytes, for ions in solution, the activity coefficient will be less than 1 because of solute-solute and solute-solvent interactions. So there are two, so gamma is less than 1 for two reasons. First of all, you have ion dipole interactions of these ions in water. So for example, you have the sodium ions, then oxygen of the water is partial negative charge, and then you have this ion dipole, and so on. Similarly for the, say, sulfate, you would have the partial positive charge of the oxygen associating with the negative charge in the sulfate. So what this does, it takes out of solution some of the sodium ions. The sodium ions now are bound up by water and so they're not as active as you expect them to be and therefore the activity coefficient will be less than 1. And a second reason why the activity coefficient would be less than 1 for ions in solution, ions in water, are phenomena called ion pairing. So actually the sodium ions in solution are paired up with the sulfate ions in solution. So you have this ion pairing here, which means that these uh, sodium and sulfate ions are less active because they're not by themselves, they're paired up, and therefore the activity coefficient would be less than 1. And as oh, so we mentioned, we cannot separate positive from negative species in electrolytes, so we have to consider the total electrochemical potential, both the positive and the negative. Well, here's an example for sodium chloride. We have the total sodium chloride chemical potential is the sodium uh, standard state plus RT times the activity of sodium plus the chloride standard state plus RT log chloride, activity of chloride. For sodium sulfate, the total chemical potential will be, oh look, you have two. This is multiplied by two because when you put this in water, you get two sodium ions, so that's where that two comes from. And then you have here the sulfate. Let's uh, continue to develop this idea and let's take, um, oh, say a general system where you have N plus, that's the number of ions in solution with positive charge. And let's say N minus will be associated with the number of ions in solution with negative charge. And as I write this, I realize, duh, ions with positive charge are cations. <laughs> Forgot that. And the negative ions would be anions. So for example, if we have Na2SO42 minus, here N plus will be equal to 2, That's, and N minus will be equal to 1. You have only one sulfate, but two sodiums when you put it in water. So let's write the total chemical potential of a solution that contains uh, N plus and uh, N minus. The total chemical potential will be the number of uh, species with the plus times the chemical potential, electrochemical potential, got to remember we have ions of the plus species, plus the number uh, in the minus times the electrochemical potential of the minus species. And again, the plus and minus refer to the stoichiometric coefficients when you dissolve a substance in water. Uh, like for instance, if you have Na2SO4, when you put this in water, you get 2 Na plus and 1 SO4, 2 minus. So the N plus here would be 2 and the N minus here would be 1. So let's go ahead and uh, expand out the electrochemical potential in terms of activities. So this would be the N plus 
times the electric standard state electrochemical potential, the plus species, plus RT times the natural log of the activity of the plus species, plus the number of the minus species, times the electrochemical potential um, of the minus species, standard state, plus RT times the natural log of the activity of the minus species. Now let's substitute in activities with our concentrations and activity coefficients. So this is then equal to the number of plus times the electrochemical potential standard state of the plus plus RT times the natural log. Again, we're going to put gamma of the plus when doing the plus species times the molality of the plus divided by the standard state molality. So here our standard state, this zero refers to one molar concentration uh, plus the number of the negative charge species times their standard state chemical potential, electrochemical potential, plus <clears throat> RT times the natural log of the activity coefficient of the negative species times their molal uh, solution concentration divided by standard state. All right, so this is interesting. There's a total chemical potential, but it's not particularly useful because it has gamma plus and gamma minus. Those are activity coefficients of just the plus and just the minus species, which we can't really measure. We can uh, measure them together, but not separately. So what one does is to introduce some averaged terms, and I'll, I'll write those in just a minute. Just let me rewrite this as n plus mu zero standard state, sorry, <laughs> that should be the plus of the standard state plus n minus mu plus of the standard state plus, uh, let me pull out an RT, n plus times the natural log of gamma plus m plus over m zero plus n minus times the natural log of gamma one m sorry gamma minus this should be gamma plus gamma minus let me get a little more clear here m minus over m zero and again these should be <laughs> superscript to indicate standard state so let's make approximations we'll, or some assumptions about averages and when we actually work this out, we'll see why we're making these assumptions, or these averages. Uh, let's first define n plus minus, this symbol, to be n plus plus n minus. Let's define gamma plus minus to be equal to gamma of the plus raised to that coefficient n plus. Remember, that's the stoichiometric coefficient. When you dissolve it here, n plus would be 2 for sodium sulfate, times gamma minus raised to the n minus power. All this to the power of 1 over n plus minus. That's the sum of the coefficients. Sum of the coefficients here for sodium sulfate will be 2 plus 1, or 3. And let's define similarly m plus minus the molal concentration plus minus to be the molal concentration of the plus raised to the n plus power times the molal concentration of the minus species raised to the n minus power divided by or raised to the power of 1 over n plus minus. So why do we make these funny averages? So now we have like an average activity coefficient with an average molal solution concentration. Why do we do this? Well, let us form the expression gamma plus minus m plus minus divided by m zero. And let's take the log of this and multiply by n plus minus. When we actually do this, what we'll find is that we get this term here, if we multiply by RT, we'll get this term in here, which we can then replace this term, we can then replace with this term. So instead of independently having activity coefficients of the plus or minus, we'll have this averaged activity coefficient of the plus or minus. All right, so let's actually go ahead and do this. Let's take the natural log, substitute in here, gamma plus minus, n plus minus, and n plus minus. n plus minus natural log of gamma 
plus minus m plus minus over m0. That's equal to n plus minus natural log gamma plus minus. Remember that was gamma plus raised to the n plus power gamma minus raised to the n minus power all raised to the 1 over n plus minus power. Malau concentration was the plus raised to the n plus power, the minus raised to the n minus power, divided by 1 over n plus minus, divided by m. Sorry, that should not be the whole thing, just that the thing you're taking the logarithm of should be divided by m0. And again, I keep forgetting to put those superscript m0. So this is equal to n plus minus. This is multiplies as in plus minus. Let's see. So we have this raised to the n plus minus and this, sorry, 1 over n plus minus. This raised to the 1 over n plus minus. So we can take that out of the logarithm. 1 over n plus minus times the natural log of gamma plus gamma minus. This is raised to the n plus is raised to the n minus. Here we have m raised to the n plus for the plus, m for minus raised to the n minus, all over m zero. Look, that cancels out. Oh, how convenient. So what we're left with, let me rewrite and note that the uh, logarithm of a product, here we'll just do this as a product, is a sum of the logarithms. All right, so this will just be the natural log of gamma minus m minus raised to the n minus power plus the natural log of gamma plus m plus raised to the n plus power. And that is equal to, take down the n minus, n minus natural log. Oh, if we, I forgot to uh, carry along the m zero. Let me carry along the M0. Uh, well, let me just continue this on the uh, next page. This is equal to N minus natural log of gamma minus M minus over standard state M0 plus N plus natural log of gamma plus M plus over M0. All right, so what have we done here? We've taken the natural log, we took n plus minus times the natural log of this, okay, and we worked it all out and substituted and we got n minus times that, n plus times that, and lo and behold, look at that, n plus times that, n minus times that. So this can be replaced by n plus minus times the natural log of gamma plus n plus minus. Okay, so isn't that neat? I'll just rewrite that, so the total, mu total, and we said that this term can be replaced by, let's rewrite this stuff here, mu zero, which should be a plus, plus n minus, mu minus, center state, plus RT times n plus minus natural log of gamma plus minus m plus minus over m zero. Well, that's kind of neat. So now, or just let me re, let me define mu plus minus standard state as defined as n plus mu plus zero plus n minus mu minus like chemical potential zero. In other words, this term we're going to replace with this symbol here. So this is equal to mu plus minus zero plus r t times the natural log of gamma plus minus m plus minus over m zero. And I'm going to take this up and raise that to the power n plus minus. And we're going to define this as the average activity a plus minus. So it's the activity not of the plus and not of the minus, but some sort of average a plus minus. So what we end up with is our familiar equation with these new symbols plus RT times the natural log of the activity plus minus. So you can't measure 
uh, activity coefficients independently of the pluses and minuses, but you can do some sort of average, and so the total chemical potential is just this uh, averaged here, or summed there, plus this average activity. All right, so that's the whole point of that long exercise, is that even though you can't independently measure activity coefficients with a plus or minus, you can measure averages. That's what all this is about. We made those, and here's the bottom line there. The activity, now the average activity of the ions in solution is this expression here, where you have an average activity coefficient, which is defined as the activity coefficient of the pluses and minuses separately.